This anime begins by showing a world filled with giant insect monsters called contaminants which are very dangerous for mankind. To protect themselves from these fearsome creatures, the humans have created mobile cities called regios, which are protected by domes in the sky and are powered by virtual spirits that allow them to walk and escape the attacks of the contaminants. One day, one of these cities, regios, comes under attack by a group of contaminants. Just when all seems lost, three men appear on the scene heaven blade wielders, skilled fighters who have been trained to combat the contaminants. However, despite their best efforts, the contaminants can regenerate quickly and the battle seems hopeless. Can the Heaven Blade wielders find a way to defeat these monstrous foes and save the city of Regios? Several years after a significant event, we see a male student leaving the 17th platoon at a military academy. The leader of the 17th platoon, Nina Antok, tries to persuade him to stay, but he is determined to leave. As a result, Nina and the remaining members of the 17th platoon are left to search for new recruits. At the new student admission ceremony, they find that most of the talented students have already been recruited by other platoons. Just as they are about to give up hope, a young man named Leif von Wolfstein arrives. He is not wearing a uniform and explains that he is simply a regular student, not a military arts student. As he is walking, he is approached by Mifi Rotten, a girl claiming to be a journalist. She asks Leif von why he is not wearing a uniform, and he tells her the truth about his enrollment status. As Leif von and Rotten continue their conversation, a sudden fight breaks out between two new students at the military academy. Rotten, excited by the opportunity for a good story, rushes to cover the incident, while Leifun decides to leave. However, the fight causes a female student named Mei to be injured, and Leifun's instincts kick in as he rushes to save her. Soon after, the two fighting students finally stop, and everyone is amazed by the skill Leifun has. Because of that, the student council president of the military academy, Kalian Loss, invites Leifun to his office and explains that he is the leader of all the platoons in the city. He asks Leifun to transfer to the military academy. But Leifan initially refuses, as he only wanted to study regular subjects. However, feeling that he has no other choice, Leifan eventually agrees to join. At the same time, Nina, who has taken an interest in him, arrives at the student council office and asks him to join the 17th platoon. In the afternoon, Leifan is walking towards the boys' dormitory when he sees a white-haired girl with a voice that sounds familiar to him. He approaches her and asks if she warned him earlier, but she doesn't answer and walks away. Then Leifan continues on his way to the dormitory to rest. The next day, Nina and the other members of the 17th platoon are annoyed when Leifan doesn't show up on time. When he finally arrives, Nina introduces him to the rest of the platoon, Sharnade Lipton, a sniper, Harley Sutton, a mechanic, and Feli Loss, the white-haired girl Leifan met the previous day. Then Leifan explains that he can't join the platoon because he will be working at night, but Nina doesn't care and wants to test his abilities. She takes out her weapon and asks Harley to lend him a weapon. At that moment, Leifan is forced to choose one of the boxes provided, and when he casts a restoration spell, it turns into a sword. Shortly after, they engage in a fierce battle, with Leifan remaining calm under Nina's various attacks. Impressed by his abilities, Nina becomes serious and uses her ultimate technique, ultimately defeating him and causing him to pass out. While he is being treated, Leifan can heal himself much to the surprise of Feli, who is nearby when he wakes up. After leaving him, Feli is followed by Leifan, who she then reveals that her older brother, Kalian, had forced him to join the military academy. She explains that Kalian had intentionally sabotaged the 17th platoon, causing them to lose a member, and had arranged for the fight between the two new students at the acceptance ceremony to bring Leifan into the platoon. In the evening, Leifan goes to work part-time and runs into Nina. She is surprised to see him, as he should still be in the hospital recovering from her ultimate technique. Leifan insists that he has recovered, but Nina is even more surprised, as it should be impossible for someone to heal so quickly after receiving her attack. Despite her shock, she doesn't press the issue and they continue with their work. As they rest and exchange supplies, Nina tells Leifan that they will be participating in an interplatoon tournament the next day. Hearing that Leifan is surprised, as he wasn't aware of this and hasn't prepared for it. Nevertheless, he is asked to join the battle between platoons. The next day, the members of the 17th platoon are seen preparing for the tournament, hoping to win, and move on to the Intercity tournament. In the opening game, the 17th platoon faces off against the 16th platoon in a game of capturing the flag. So, the 16th platoon must defend its flag until time runs out, while the 17th platoon must destroy it. Soon after, the match begins, but in the middle of the fight, Nina has pushed aside and Leifan is left to fight alone against the enemy platoon. However, Leifan falls into a ravine due to an attack from the enemy platoon. Meanwhile, Nina continues to fight back. When Leifan returns after climbing out of the ravine, he is shocked to see Nina battered by the enemy platoon's attack. Then he gets up and fights back, 
defeating two enemy platoon members with one strike and saving her. After that, he beats up the enemy platoon leader. Shortly after, Leifun jumps onto the 16th platoon's flagpole and destroys their flag, securing the victory for the 17th platoon. After seeing that, Harley and Sharnid cheer happily and hug him, while Nina and Feli are annoyed with him for pretending to be weak the previous day. The scene shifts to another Regio city, where a girl named Liren Marfest is seen sitting and writing a letter. However, the wind blows the letter away and Liren chases after it. As she runs, she stumbles upon a woman sleeping on the grass. Upon seeing the woman, she bursts into tears, though she doesn't know why. Then the woman wakes up and asks Liren why she is crying. Upon seeing Liren, the woman feels like she knows her and sees the figure of another woman, Saya. After that, they introduce themselves and become friends. Meanwhile, after the platoon battle is over, Leifan is approached by Kalyan, who tells him that he is a great heaven blade wielder. However, Leifan insists that he is no longer a heaven blade wielder and leaves Kalyan. In the evening, Leifan returns to work and encounters Nina, who is still angry with him for pretending to be weaker than he actually is during their fight. After talking for a while, they make up. Then he tells her about his difficult upbringing in a city constantly under attack from contaminants. As they continue to talk, Nina suddenly realizes that the virtual spirit that powers their city has stopped. Nina investigates the sudden stop of the virtual spirit, and discovers that a group of men is attempting to steal it. The virtual spirit, Svelni, is her best friend. Then she fights against the kidnappers and is aided by a man named Dixirio Moskane. They ultimately win the fight, but Moskane knocks Nina unconscious and tells her that she will forget what just happened when she wakes up. The next day, Leifan meets Feli and they travel home together on a bus. Meanwhile, in another Regio city, a man is seen chasing after a woman named Canaris Riven. He tells her that Leifan has disappeared and the Heaven Blade wielders must be replaced, proposing a match to determine the new wielders. However, Canaris refuses and goes into a room to grumble, only to be surprised by the presence of a woman she calls Queen Alshira, who is actually Sinola. On the other hand, Kalyan had always been wary of strange goings-on in the kingdom, so when he received a tip about suspicious activity at a certain location, he knew exactly who to call. He reached out to Vans Haldi, the leader of the military arts division, and asked him to check it out. Meanwhile, Feli was enjoying a leisurely afternoon at a cafe when she overheard a conversation between Mei, Rotten, and Nariki. They were planning to visit a haunted facility that night, and Feli, always up for a bit of adventure, decided to join them. As the sun began to set, the four of them made their way to the abandoned facility. They were eager to see what secrets it held. When they explored the abandoned facility, they were suddenly ambushed by a terrifying monster. It caught Mei, Rotten, and Naruki, leaving Feli alone and terrified. She frantically searched for her friends, but the monster reappeared, and she didn't know what to do. Just when all hopes seemed lost, Vans arrived on the scene, ready to take on the beast. He fought bravely, and after a fierce battle, he emerged victorious, defeating the monster. Breathless and covered in sweat, Vans approached Feli and asked her what she was doing there. She explained that she had come with her friends, and Vans nodded, understanding. He then went on to explain that the facility had once been used by humans to create monsters called guardians to defend against the contaminants. But for some reason, the research had been abandoned, and the guardian monster that should have been sealed had somehow managed to escape. Determined to find her friends, Feli used her powers to track their whereabouts. It wasn't long before she was able to locate them, and she and Van set off to rescue them. As they made their way to the basement where Mei, Rotten, and Naruki were being held, they were ambushed by a guardian. At that place, Vans bravely stepped forward to fight the monster, but unfortunately, he was no match for its strength. Despite the danger, Feli refused to give up. She searched for a way to defeat the Guardian and, with Van's help, was able to come up with a plan. Together, they launched a surprise attack on the monster and, after a fierce battle, were finally able to defeat it. Soon after, Feli and Vans turned to each other, relieved and grateful to have made it through the ordeal together. She watched in horror as Vans struggled against the Guardian monster, determined to find a way to help. She remembered the ladder she had spotted earlier and had an idea. She climbed to the top and used her powers to collapse the ceiling, burying the guardian beneath a pile of rubble. With the monster now immobilized, Vans was able to finish it off, and May and the others were safe. But as they emerged from the abandoned facility, Vans couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. He wondered how the sealed guardian monsters had been able to escape and spread terror throughout the kingdom. The next day, Nina and the others headed off to watch an interplatoon match, while Leifan went on a date with May. As they walked through the city park, chatting and enjoying each other's company, they were suddenly interrupted by a tremendous shock. Suddenly, a group of giant contaminants surrounded the city, trapping it in place and preventing it from moving. Then Kalyan summoned all members of the military arts division to the headquarters, where he explained the dire situation they were facing. The legs of their city, Regios, were stuck and couldn't be moved. 
But Nina refused to believe it, insisting that the city should be able to move away from any contaminants that threatened it. Kellyan patiently explained that Regios could only detect and avoid contaminants on the surface. The ones that were attacking their city were underground, and he suspected that they were newly hatched larvae. He ordered the military arts members to evacuate the residents and prepare to fight the contaminants. Nina grudgingly agreed to lead the 17th platoon, teaming up with the 9th platoon as they headed northwest. As they walked, Leifan suddenly appeared and tried to convince her to evacuate. But she was determined to fight and was angry and disappointed when Leifan refused to join her, despite his immense strength. As the two platoons arrived at the front lines, they were greeted by thousands of approaching contaminants. Then the firing squad launched an attack, but to no avail. Nina and the other attackers stepped forward to engage the monsters, only to discover that their skin was impenetrable to all attacks. They were completely outmatched, and it seemed like all hope was lost. As the members of the military arts division continued to fight, Leifan wandered aimlessly through the deserted city. He knew he had to do something to help, but he wasn't sure what. After a moment of contemplation, he decided to seek out Harley and request a modified weapon. He also contacted Feli, asking her to locate the coordinates of the contaminant larva's parent. Meanwhile, many members of the military arts division had fled, unable to stand against the overwhelming numbers of contaminants. Only Nina remained, stubbornly fighting on despite the odds. She was pushed to the brink, barely avoiding being hurt. Just when all seemed lost, one of the contaminants attacking Nina suddenly disintegrated. She looked up to see Leifan standing there, holding a weapon with sharp threads. Without a word, he jumped down and began fighting alongside her. He told Nina to back off, saying the place was too dangerous. He fought his way through the ranks of contaminants, taking out thousands as he advanced. Finally, he reached the canyon where the contaminant mothership was located. There, he faced off against the mother of the contaminants and emerged victorious. The next day, Nina was shocked to see that all of the contaminants attacking the city had been slaughtered, thanks to Leifan's bravery. He returned from the lair with a battered face, but he was hailed as a hero. A few days later, the interplatoon match was held once again. This time, the 17th platoon was pitted against the 14th platoon. Despite their best efforts, the 17th platoon ultimately lost the match, their reliance on Leifun proving to be their downfall. Meanwhile, May received a letter for Leifun from a woman named Lirin. She was curious and wanted to open it, but she resisted the urge and took it to the 17th platoon headquarters to deliver it to Leifun. There, she was surprised to run into Feli, and in her haste to leave, she accidentally dropped the letter. Seeing that, Feli picked it up, intrigued by the mysterious woman who had sent it to Leifun. As for Leifun, he was approached by Naruki, who worked at the police department. She asked for his help on a mission the following day, and he agreed. The next day, Leifun and Naruki set out on their mission. However, they were suddenly ambushed by a group of assailants, and he was forced to take action, swiftly defeating them. Meanwhile, Feli tucked the letter she had found under Leifun's bag, but it fell out and was eventually discovered by Nina. She was curious about the woman named Lirin who had sent it to Leifun. In the afternoon, she gave the letter to him, who had just returned from helping Naruki. Sometimes later, Leifun was seen practicing with his friends. After finishing their training, they went for a walk in the park, where they saw Nina practicing alone. Naruki commented that Nina was obviously trying to get stronger, particularly after the 17th platoon's defeat in the inter-platoon match. But she explained that the real reason Nina was pushing herself so hard was because she was jealous of Leifun's strength. Not long after, they were shocked to find Nina unconscious and rushed her to the hospital. As they waited for her to be treated, they were surprised when Zelni's path led them toward a contaminant cocoon. Then Feli reminded them that Kalyan had assigned Leifan to check on the cocoon later that night. As instructed, Leifan set out on his motorbike to investigate the contaminant cocoon. He reported back to Feli on what he saw, but before he could finish, the contaminant emerged from its cocoon, fully evolved. Soon after, Leifan bravely engaged the monster in battle, but he was no match for its strength. He was slammed to the ground, but he refused to give up. He launched attack after attack, determined to defeat the beast. Unfortunately, none of Leifan's attacks seemed to have any effect, and he was slammed to the ground again. Just when things seemed their bleakest, Nina and Sharnet arrived, ready to lend a hand. But even with their help, the contaminoid was too powerful. They were forced to retreat, riding their motorbikes to the canyon area to regroup and come up with a new plan. In the afternoon, the contaminoid caught up with Nina, Sharnet, Leifan, and the others. Because of that, Nina quickly thought of a plan and lured the contaminoid into a nearby canyon. While she kept the creature distracted, Sharnet took aim at the cliffs above and began firing. The shots caused the shower of rocks to rain down on the contaminant, pounding and battering it. Then Leifan saw his opportunity and moved in to deliver the final blow, destroying the contaminoid once and for all. Finally, the group succeeded in defeating the dangerous creature, thanks to their quick thinking and teamwork. 
As Liren sat in her room, reading a letter from Leifan, a white-haired man suddenly appeared beside her, causing her to start in surprise. She asked the man who he was, but before he could answer, they were suddenly transported to the roof of a nearby building. Shortly after, a black-haired man appeared, and Liren recognized him as Linten's Harden. And the white-haired man, Savlis Lekens, introduced himself as a Heaven Blade wielder. On the other hand, as the 17th platoon clashed with the 5th platoon, Leifun found himself facing off against a formidable opponent a male student named Gornio. To Leifun's surprise, he recognized Gornio as someone from his hometown of Glendon. Suddenly, Gornio revealed that he was the younger brother of Savalis, one of the Heaven Blade wielders. Then Leifun and Gornio engaged in a fierce battle, but in the midst of the fight, Gornio was aided by a member of the 5th platoon, Shante Leite. Despite her assistance, they continued to fight fiercely. Soon after, Leite summoned a fireball and hurled it at Leifun, but he countered by creating a tornado that deflected the attack and sent her flying. Undeterred, she charged at him with her spear, but Leifun's body suddenly vanished and reappeared behind Gornio. Then Leifun used his power to create multiple copies of himself, surrounding Gornio and Leite. At that time, they struggled to find the real Leifun among the replicas, but they were interrupted when Nina managed to snatch the flag from the platoon, securing victory for the 17th platoon. The next day, Leifan and Gornio were summoned to Kalian's room to address a pressing problem. Soon after, Kalian showed them a photograph of a Rayqua city that had been attacked by contaminants. Meanwhile, Liren learned from Savalis that she was the target of the attack, but she was confused as to why and asked him for more information. However, he was reluctant to reveal more, so she confided in Sinola about the situation. Upon returning to the city that had been attacked, Leifan and the 17th and 5th platoons were shocked to find it had been completely destroyed and abandoned by its inhabitants. As they explored the abandoned city, Nina realized that they were in Gondaria, a city she had visited two years ago for a race in which she lost to a platoon from Gondaria. The group was stunned to see that a city as strong as Gondaria could be destroyed so easily by the contaminants. As they journeyed on, a contaminoid shell suddenly fell and they discovered that Gornio and Leite were the perpetrators. Then he asked Leifan why someone chosen to become a Heaven Blade wielder would choose to run away and live an easy life. At that moment, Nina was shocked to learn that Leifan had actually been a member of the Heaven Blade wielders. Then Gornio went on to explain to her and the others that Leifan had participated in dungeon duels and earned money from them, which ultimately led to his banishment from the city of Glendon. After that, Gornio and Nina went to a tower to have a private conversation. He revealed that he couldn't forgive Leifan for having injured his teacher, Gahard. Afterward, Nina sought out Leifan and asked him to speak with her privately. She asked why he had participated in illegal duels, and Leifan explained that he needed money to survive. He went on to say that for him, the Heaven Blade wielders and military art were simply tools he needed to survive. On the other hand, Liren was suddenly attacked by a terrifying monster who held a grudge against Leifan and knew that she was close friends with him. As the monster lunged towards Liren, her father tried to intervene and defend her, but he was no match for the creature and was quickly defeated. Just as the monster was about to strike again, a light beast appeared and drove it away, saving Liren from harm. After the monster attack, Liren fainted and was caught by Sinola. Suddenly, Savlis appeared and fought off the monster, revealing it to be Gahard, Gornio's injured teacher. There, Savlis easily defeated Gahard, and as Gornio woke up from a dream of his teacher, he saw something strange and went outside to find Leite, who attacked him before collapsing and fainting. Later, Leifan and the others gathered to discuss the strange creatures in the city. Gornio suggested further exploration to uncover the truth, but Leifan felt it was too risky and suggested going alone. However, Nina disagreed, and they all agreed to Gornio's suggestion to explore together. As they searched, they discovered a strange object in a cemetery crypt. As Feli sensed something approaching from above, Leifan rushed to investigate. As he navigated through the dark alleys, he came upon a bright light emanating from a male goat with long horns. As the figure appeared, Leifun found himself unable to move, while the goat spoke of various things, seemingly wanting him to be its master. The goat offered itself as a tool for Leifun to destroy his enemies, but he paid no heed to its words. As Leifun continued to struggle and flick his blade, he finally managed to injure the goat, causing the light to dim and the goat to disappear. However, he soon realized that his connection with Feli was fading, causing him to worry and search for her. As he looked for her, he stumbled upon Leite and they engaged in a fight, but Leifan emerged victorious. As Gornio tried to intervene and stop Leite, an unexpected explosion occurred behind them. Then Leifan used his wind technique to deflect the explosion, protecting them. Suddenly, the goat reappeared and attacked him, who was able to deflect the attack and make the goat disappear once more. After the incident, Leifan and the others decided to return to their regios and report what had happened to Kalian. One night, Leifan was approached by Naruki, who said that there was something urgent and important that required his attention. 
Then they went to a crime scene, where Lei Fun was informed by a police officer that someone had been selling illegal strength-enhancing drugs. Soon after, a riot broke out, and he set out to find the mastermind behind it. He eventually encountered a man named Haya Salanban, who had red hair and wore an eye patch. At that time, Haya initially tried to flee, but Lei Fun chased after him and they engaged in a fierce battle on the roof of a building. As they fought, Haya noticed that Lei Fun was not using his full strength and realized that he was capable of transforming into a heaven blade wielder. To defend himself, Lei Fun claimed to be a military artist from Glendon, causing Haya to remove his blindfold and reveal his face. Enraged, he launched a brutal attack that destroyed the roofs of surrounding buildings, eventually pushing Haya off the roof. Suddenly, Haya's mate, Munfa, appeared and launched an arrow at Lei Fan, but he was able to dodge it. Then they fled the scene. Sometime later, Lei Fan and Nina assisted Naruki in investigating a drug case, suspecting that the leader of the 10th platoon, Din Di, was involved. They believed that Din was using a drug called Overload. Later, Din was seen meeting with a female student named Matelna, with Nina and Naruki following them from a distance. As they parted ways, Din reached for something in his clothes but was interrupted by Nina's appearance. Then he tried to walk away, but Nina asked him to stop using the overload drug. At first, Din pretended not to know what Nina was talking about, but she reminded him that the city police were investigating him. Then he eventually confessed to using the drug but claimed it was to protect others. After this confrontation, Nina and the others went to see Kalyan and explained the situation to Din, asking for the police investigation to be stopped. Hearing that, Kalyan agreed on the condition that Lei Fan and the 17th platoon have a platoon battle against the platoon led by Din. Later, Haya appeared in Kalyan's room and revealed that he had been summoned by Kalyan to handle a serious problem. Then he explained that an electric spirit, a goat with long horns, had appeared in the ruins of the city and threatened the city's security. He said he did not want the spirit to appear in the city and cause any more disturbances. The next day, a battle between the two platoons began. During the match, Leifan faced off against Din while Nina fought Matelna. The battle was long and fierce, but suddenly a longhorn goat appeared above Din's body, revealing that Kalyan had planned this all along. As this was happening, Haya and his men appeared and attempted to bind Din with chains to destroy the electrical spirit within him. However, their plan involved killing Din, causing Leifan to step in and try to stop him believing that there must be another way to defeat the electrical spirit without resorting to murder. While Leifun fought Haya, Nina worked with Matelna to stop the actions of Haya's group. They searched the forest and found Munfa holding Din captive, leading to a battle in which he was defeated. Soon after, Haya and Leifun continued to fight, with both of them launching attacks at each other. Then he managed to injure Leifun, but Leifun was able to destroy his sword and knock him down. Meanwhile, Matelna encountered Din, who was still tied up and worked to resuscitate him, ultimately causing the electric spirit to leave Din's body and resolve the issue. A few days later, the members of the 17th platoon held a meeting to discuss their upcoming match against the 1st platoon. Nina declared that the match would be difficult and ordered them to train hard. In preparation, the members of the 17th platoon headed to a mountainous area for training. One night, Leifun met up with Mei at a bridge and the two were chatting when a powerful explosion suddenly rocked the entire bridge. At that time, Leifan managed to pull Mei to safety, but both of them were trapped in the rubble. Fortunately, he managed to save her but was seriously injured and eventually passed out. Shortly after, Nina and the others eventually located them and brought Leifan to the hospital. Due to the extent of his injuries, Leifan had to be hospitalized for a long period of time, even though their match against the first platoon was only a few days away. After the incident on the bridge, Nina was determined to become stronger. Meanwhile, Harley couldn't shake the feeling that the accident had been a sabotage, meant to keep Leifun from competing. When Leifun was finally released from the hospital, Nina hesitated to involve him in the fight, feeling that she couldn't always rely on him. The long-awaited match between the 17th platoon and the formidable 1st platoon, led by Vance, finally began. Without Leifun, the 17th platoon recruited Matelna from the 10th platoon to fill his position. Then Matelna asked Nina for her strategy, and she revealed her plan to lure the members of the first platoon in a certain direction. As the battle raged on, Nina called out to Matelna, assigning her the crucial task of assisting Sharnid in taking out the enemy from a distance. However, Matelna was hesitant, feeling that the plan was too risky. Despite her reservations, Matelna reluctantly followed through with the plan as Nina stepped up to confront the leader of the first platoon, Vans. Then they engaged in a fierce showdown, but she was no match for Vans' superior strength and was quickly defeated. After being released from the hospital, Leifun met with Kalyan, who had been waiting for him. Kalyan told him that Zeoni had been acting strangely and asked him to defeat the contaminants that were blocking Zeoni's path. Unbeknownst to Leifun, Kalyan had assigned him to work with Haya and his men, who had provided the information about the contaminants. 
He explained that the accident on the bridge, which had injured Leifan, was just one of the consequences of the contaminants' actions. Similar accidents had been happening all over the city, as the electrical spirit was trying to destroy Zelni. At the same time, the 17th platoon was also assigned to help with the mission. Benina asked her team to assist Leifun instead, as she had to go take care of something. After that, she went to where Zelni was and was surprised to find the electrical spirit hovering above it. Then the spirit repeated what it had told Leifun, that it was searching for a new master and could be a powerful weapon against anyone. As it spoke, the spirit emitted a bright light that knocked Nina unconscious. Meanwhile, Leifun and his allies finally reached the contaminants, and even though he was still injured, he advanced on his own and quickly defeated all the contaminants in the area. While Leifun was busy defeating the contaminants, Kellyan ordered the other military arts members to investigate the situation around Zelni. Then Vans reported that Nina had gone to the area, but they couldn't find her anywhere. As it turns out, Nina had been attacked by the electrical spirit and was saved by Zelni, who sent her to a distant town called Mia. Meanwhile, Leifun continued to push forward, fighting the contaminants that were blocking Zelni's path, even though he was alone against a large number of them. Eventually, Leifun returned to base, looking tired, as his condition was unstable and he couldn't fight at his best. Then he asked Harley to repair his weapon, which was starting to break down. Soon after, Feli and Sharnet arrived and asked him to rest, as he had been fighting for three days straight. But Leifun was too concerned about Nina's whereabouts to rest, and when Feli told him that they had no news of her, he became angry and declared that he would leave in six hours to continue eradicating the contaminants. Meanwhile, Liren and Savaris had arrived in the city of Mia. While Savaris searched for electrical spirits, Liren had another mission, to deliver a weapon that Leifun had once used. As she walked through the streets, she unexpectedly ran into Nina. Then they struck up a conversation, but it was soon interrupted by a group of birds swirling around a bright light in the middle of the city. Nina believed that the birds were attracted to an electrical spirit, and quickly made her way toward the commotion by leaping from roof to roof. Liren, who was watching from a distance, saw a luminous bird fly and perch on her hand. Meanwhile, Kalyan had prohibited Leifun from fighting, as his condition was too unstable. Then he met with all the townspeople to explain the situation. He told them that they were in an area filled with contaminants, and asked all the troops there to help fight them. Meanwhile, Nina was attacked by several mysterious people, so she fought against all of them and managed to defeat some of her enemies. Despite her efforts, she was still outnumbered and struggling to hold her own. Just when things were looking dire, Moskane appeared to lend a hand and urge Nina to hurry to Liren, as she was the only one who could calm the agitated goat that had taken up residence within Nina. While all this was happening, Savaris had been covertly observing the situation and finally realized that the horned goat he had been searching for was actually inside Nina's body. Meanwhile, Liren had been captured by a man who claimed to be a military artist, but it turned out that he was actually one of the attackers who had been targeting Nina. Fortunately, she arrived just in time to rescue Liren and send the kidnapper fleeing. As they returned to the inn, Nina's body started to glow again and this time, she became very sick. Suddenly, a goat with horns appeared on top of her body. At that moment, Liren began to pray, and her actions sent them both to another dimension, where she met a black-haired woman named Saya. Shortly after, Saya offered to lend her power to Liren, and when they returned, they found Savlis there, but Nina had disappeared. Meanwhile, the members of the platoon were gathering to channel their energy into a giant cannon. Then Kalyan gave the order to fire, and the cannon destroyed hundreds of contaminants that were far in front of them. Following the successful rescue, several platoon squads moved to attack the remaining contaminants, while Leifun, still exhausted from the previous battle, watched from within the city with Feli. After a short while, he joined the group, but as they were chatting, the city suddenly began to tremble. Then Feli tried to determine the cause of the shaking and discovered that Zelni had emerged from her resting place and was now floating in the air. Meanwhile, Nina remained in a mysterious dimension with Moskane, sitting and watching a screen that displayed past events involving the electrical spirit. Moskane then revealed that he was interested in the electrical spirit inside Nina's body and in Liren, as he believed that she was the source of the electric spirit. He urged Nina to protect her. Suddenly, Nina fell from the room, tumbling down to the battlefield below. As she hovered in the air, she watched the people below as they fought against the contaminants. Inspired by her bravery, Leifun finally joined the fight at the forefront, launching a series of attacks that defeated many of the contaminants. As he jumped high towards a ball of light in the sky, he realized that Nina was inside it. Then they hugged each other as they were reunited. After returning, Nina was examined to ensure that she had not been adversely affected by her experiences. Fortunately, she was declared to be in good health. In the meantime, Haya seemed to be scheming against Feli. As for Nina, she returned to sparring with Leifan and they fought an intense match, with her showing improved skills and even managing to hold her own against Leifan. 
As this was happening, Kalyan received news that the city of Mia was on a collision course with a city being brought by Zelni, leading the two cities to prepare for battle. Coincidentally, Liren and Savaris were currently in Mia, but they had already left the town. At the same time, Kalyan received disturbing news that Feli had been kidnapped by Haya, who demanded a match against Leifun as a condition for her return. Without hesitation, Leifun accepted the challenge. However, the timing of his match with Haya coincided with an inter-city battle, forcing Nina and her friends in the 17th platoon to fight without Leifun by their side. Meanwhile, Liren and Savlis had arrived in the city of Zelni, with her eagerly looking forward to reuniting with Leifun. Savaris, however, had some unfinished business to attend to and bid farewell to her. The following day, Leifun was busy preparing for his match with Haya at the designated location. As for the military artists, they had made preparations for a match against the platoon from the city of Mia, and the two cities would soon face off against each other once again. As Leifun confronted Haya, he demanded the release of Feli. However, Haya refused, stating that he would only release her after their business with each other was concluded. Then they engaged in a fierce battle. Meanwhile, Kalyan gets a very surprising notification that Mia's journey has changed so it makes the battle between cities unable to continue. Mia apparently changed the route away from Zoni, so Kalyan immediately conveyed this to the entire platoon including Nina. Upon hearing the news, Nina rushed to find Leifun, who was locked in an intense battle with Haya. At that time, they showed impressive moves that amazed everyone who was observing the fight. At first, the match seemed evenly matched, but then Leifun employed his tornado style, sending Haya soaring into the air. Suddenly, Munfa attempted to shoot Leifan and assist Haya, but he was stopped by his comrades, as the fight was supposed to be between Leifan and Haya alone. Haya managed to strike Leifan with his flaming sword, but the fight continued with such intensity that it caused various explosions and vibrations. The vibrations from the fight caused the door holding Feli to open, and she was able to escape and witness Leifan, who had just been injured by Haya's slash. Then Feli tried to approach the wounded Leifan, but he told her to stay back as the area was still dangerous. Despite his injury, Leifan persevered and continued the fight until he finally emerged victorious over Haya. At that moment, he was ready to end Haya's life, but Munfa appeared and embraced Haya, causing Leifan to reconsider and spare him. As Leifan went to meet Feli, she worriedly looked at his condition. However, he reassured her that he was fine, but before long, Nina arrived and was also concerned about Leifan's injuries. Suddenly, a girl slapped him, revealing herself to be Liren. On the other hand, Kalyan finally knew the reason why Mia had changed their route because far ahead of the city of Zelni, it turned out that there was another city, which was none other than the city of Glendon. Despite their dire circumstances, everyone refused to give up and stood their ground. Some time later, Liren was seen by Leifan's bedside in the hospital, where she shared her experiences with Nina. However, Leifan was surprised by her story and asked her to tell him more about what had happened to Nina. As this was happening, Savaris met with his younger brother, Gornio, who asked him why Glendon was approaching Zelni. Savaris revealed that their goal was to obtain the electrical spirit in Zelni. He also coldly admitted to killing Gahard before leaving his brother behind. At the same time, Kalyan detected that Zelni had suddenly altered its journey towards Glendon, signaling an inevitable battle between the troops. In anticipation of a worsening situation, he ordered the platoons to prepare giant cannons that could be fired at a moment's notice. Upon learning of the impending battle, Leifun announced his intention to join the fight, but Liren tried to stop him, surprised that he had left Glendon to avoid the world of military art, only to return to it upon arriving in Zelni. Then Leifun explained his motivations before leaving her behind. On the other hand, when Nina was alone, she suddenly began to experience pain and was unsure of what was happening to her body. Meanwhile, Leifun and the others went to meet with Kalyan and share what had transpired. At that time, Kalyan was shocked to learn that Nina had an electrical spirit within her and finally realized the reason for Zelni's frequent outbursts. Not long after, an aurora appeared in the sky and released the contaminoid that threatened to attack the city of Zelni. Then Kalyan ordered the platoons to fire a giant cannon in response. Fortunately, the cannon shot was successful, splitting the contaminoid into two pieces. However, Feli sensed that there were still signs of life within the contaminoid, and strangely, she detected not just one, but two sources of life. Then Feli warned that when a contaminoid was cut in half, it could potentially split into two separate creatures. Upon hearing this, Kalyan immediately ordered the platoons to reload the giant cannons. He also instructed Leifan and the others to quickly find Nina and remove the electrical spirit from her body. As Kalyan sat in the control room, he couldn't shake the feeling that Nina was key to Zelni's movement. If they didn't extract the electrical spirit from within her body soon, she would end up like Din. And if they failed to extract the spirit at all, Kalyan knew they would be forced to make the ultimate sacrifice they would have to kill Nina. Then Kalyan gave Leifan and the others two hours to find her and extract the spirit, or they were to abort the mission and return to town. 
Without hesitation, they jumped on their motorcycles and set off to find Nina, determined to save her and their city. As Leifun darted through the city, he finally spotted Nina, unconscious and under the influence of the horned goat. Then he quickly realized that she had been headed towards a contaminoid whose body had been split open. At that moment, Leifun called out to her, trying to snap her out of her trance, and after much effort, he managed to revive her. However, Nina seemed to be in a daze, ignoring Leifun's pleas for her to return to the city with his comrades. Undeterred, Leifun insisted that she go back to safety while he stayed behind to fight the contaminants that surrounded them. After defeating a large number of contaminants, Leifun received word from Feli that Nina's group had been attacked by a mysterious man wielding the Heaven Blade, later revealed to be Savalis. On the other hand, Liren went to Gornio and urged him to give the sword to Leifun. As Savalis attempted to steal the power of the electrical spirit within Nina's body, Leifun arrived just in time to confront him, and they became embroiled in a fierce battle. As Leifun and Savalis fought, Savalis gained the power of the electrical spirit that had previously been in Nina's body, giving him a significant advantage. Sadly, Leifun was no match for his newfound strength. But just when all hope seemed lost, the Heaven Blade from Glendon City, one of the twelve legendary swords, flew towards Leifun and saved him. Soon after, Gornio and Liren arrived there to witness Leifun's victory with the aid of the Heaven Blade. After the battle, Liren approached Leifun and gave him a weapon he had been carrying. Then he activated the power of the sword and fused it with the Heaven Blade, creating a single, incredibly powerful sword. With this new blade, Leifun was able to defeat the remaining contaminants and save both cities from their threat. And the anime ends. The moral message that we can learn from this anime is that no matter how powerful humans are, they still need money to survive. Like Leifun who didn't care about the title Heaven Blade or military art, because more importantly 